Delving into English, unraveling the mystery of less common homophones. Hello, English language enthusiasts. Welcome back to our channel, where we help you enhance your English skills one video at a time. Today, we're venturing into the fascinating world of less common homophones in English. Now, you may ask, why focus on less common ones? Well, it's the lesser known parts of the language that often trip us up, right? Let's prevent that by expanding our knowledge and strengthening our command over English. Before diving into the less common homophones, let's quickly revisit what homophones are. Homophones are words that sound the same but have different meanings and often different spellings. For example, flower and flower sound identical when pronounced, but they are used in entirely different contexts. Now, moving on to our main topic today, less common homophones. These are words that might not come up in our daily conversation, but they do exist and knowing them can make your English more precise and impressive. For instance, phase and phase or reek and reek are pairs of less common homophones. Each pair sounds identical, but they have different meanings and spellings. As we dive deeper into these less common homophones, let's focus on their spelling differences and similarities. Often, just a single letter can change the whole meaning of a word. Like, pale, and, pale. You see, only one letter differs, yet they mean completely different things. On the other hand, some homophones might seem like they should have similar spellings due to their identical pronunciation, but that's not always the case. An example of this is I and I. The pronunciation is the same, but the spelling is vastly different. Now that we have understood the concept of less common homophones and their spelling similarities and differences, let's focus on how to master them. The key lies in contextual learning and practice. Try to use these words in sentences, write them down, read them out loud, and try to remember the context in which they were used. Over time, this will help you remember their meanings and correct usage. And that brings us to the end of our exploration of less common homophones. Remember, mastering these will not only help improve your English proficiency but also enrich your vocabulary. Homophones may seem tricky at first, but with consistent practice, they'll become second nature to you. Keep practicing, keep learning, and I promise your efforts will pay off. Thanks for joining us today, and as always, happy learning!